you win. Hey, and oh wait, haha. <laughs> wow. Hey, and welcome to the episode number five. Pretty sure it's five. Let's go with five. <laughs> yeah, we really need to run through this because this is I'm probably gonna record about one hour if I'm lucky and hope I can scratch it down to half an hour. Let's try to make it maybe even 25 minutes. That would be awesome. So, uh, first of all, I made some improvements. You know, there might be people that want more than six groups and more than just four rows of effect. So what I did, I exchanged our seven that we used all the time with group max and by asking for the group max and then we write that in and also our group pose which says how many groups are getting position effects assigned here in our executor buttons what we're gonna do today. And this looks like that. Look how he's throwing the groups. He's so cute. Uh, we say six group and how many can dance? Yeah, they could get dancing on the key. <laughs> So we say five there. So, and then we have two values, and as you see here, per just down. Now, group is not smaller seven, it's a smaller group max. So, that's gonna be great. So, today we're gonna take all our effects here and store them in our faders and in our executor buttons, and then we're gonna name the faders and the buttons, name the cues, we're gonna assign buttons and the fader as such and we're also gonna very quick get this on your screen set all the options and functions here with what kind of fader and buttons we want to have and we're gonna add a command line in the queue which says turn all the other buttons in this row off except for the one we clicked so we have them just as a go and they will execute the effect and they will turn all the other effects for this group off here we're gonna have our movement effects here our dimmer effects Okay, let's just get started right away. Let's just add a bunch of those real quick. Gonna need a lot. So, we start as always. We do our variables that we need. Ah, there are so many steps now, so what we could do is start with the most simple thing what we want to do, which is we want to assign our group. So you see already we need the group ID. We want to assign our effect. So here we need an effect ID, starting with one. And we wanna store this in two different places. And here we can already say, ah, oh, since the effect ID numbers, unlike the, the color source numbers, they will get resetted to one. Here the effect ID grows all the time. It doesn't get resetted to one. So we actually need to make an extra counter let me just show you real quick. We store in two different places. We need to step uh, to split the store functions. So as long as counter is smaller than five, uh, we store executor one for page one point fader destination, which is going to be a starting start at 11. That's cool. And then we do here the same. Counter is, no, is <laughs> bigger than for uh, we store executor 2 because I have my buttons on page 2 so they don't overlap each other as so a two point button destination <laughs> that's already that so here we have four variables that we need and we're also gonna need a queue ID oh yeah by the way the fader do you want append so when it saves again on the same fader it doesn't ask us if it wants to overwrite or merge or create a new queue this way it directly creates a new queue. So we get all our dimmer effects in the fader as a queue list. So, so let's write our variables that we know already so far. If variable, what did I call it? Damn it. <laughs> variable setting. Why setting? I should have called it setup. Ah yeah, <laughs> it will be fine. So if variable setting is on, we start with the group ID. Group ID is the one. Yep. Let's copy that real quick. Really important. Double. All right. Uh, effect ID is one as well. Then we have a fader destination is eleven, and the button destination is going to be hundred and six. Because we will start right about here. Yo. And then we also need queue destination because we're going to edit different queues in the fader so that's going to be very important so 
we get that in. View destination, and I think for now that should be fine. We already got that done, that's cool. So let's just fix the condition real quick. So as long as group ID is smaller than group max, that should do the trick. And then we clear out. Okay, so yeah, that, that does that. Let's see, should already do something. Oh yeah, fader. Yeah, we got our fader. And if we click this again, we get a next queue. So that works just like a charm. <laughs> that came by the way from Code Bullet, absolute awesome channel. Should totally check him out. Give me a lot of inspiration for my <laughs> peer. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Let's label everything we just stored. And this is going to be, let me think about it. Yeah, as long as counter is smaller than nine. Now it's right. <sighs> okay. So if counter is smaller than nine, we label. It's an L by the way, shortcut for label. We label executor. Oh no, we need to, need to do two actually. It was good that we did that as long as smaller than five because we changed the page in between. That's important. We label executor one point fader destination and we label it executor tag. So we're gonna need to make an execute attack. And what we're also going to do, we label executor one point fader destination Q, Q ID, no Q destination. And we call it Q tag. Beautiful. So it's gonna be a label executor 11 Q1 name. So that's fine. So far, so good. Uh, let's do the same for the, the executor buttons. As long as counter is bigger than four, we have executed two point button destination. Q. Oh, here we can actually write Q1 since they're going to have just one Q, so that's totally fine. And Q tag. So let's create our tags. Destroying my enter key here. <laughs> By the way, we should really turn that one off. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let me off. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Seriously. So, no. Okay, let's start with the executor attack, which is depending on the group ID. So, if group ID is a one, we set the wall execute attack to triple quotes spot fx. Uh, the reason for the triple quotes here is that if we wouldn't do that it would only be named spot because of the space here. Yeah I made my homeworks <laughs> this time. Let's hope it pays out. So yeah let me just fix this real quick. What? Ah uh, no. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go on with all the effects, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're going to be if counter is one, we set bar q tag is sinus and we continue this just talked about you could actually do all those variables like you could ask in the first macro uh, how many dimmer effects do you have how many movement effects do you have and uh, make this whole everything completely flexible you could even make the macro at lines as so basically extending itself depending on how the values look like well, actually maybe we're gonna do that in a far later version of the whole macro thing let's try that later that was just a little note aside <laughs> Ok, 
okay so now we have our creator destination we have our queue destination our queue tab right now our queue destination is one because when we run this macro we're gonna save the sinus effect in the first fader first queue so that's all really really nice now we named everything now we want to edit our options so now since we have or actually we can try this out real quick nice we have spot of x but we don't have a queue he <laughs> there we forgot something yeah <laughs> almost okay and try this again still not why not? <coughs> Q destination is nothing. How how did how did you forget that? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this again. Whoop. There we go. Sinus. Oof. Uh, <laughs> Already the first troubleshooting for today. Yay! <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay, now this works. Alright, the next thing what we want to do is we want to go in here, two options, and we want to set the execute time to ignore execute time, and we want to restart at the current queue. So the way we're gonna do this is the same way as we assign all our effects. Just gonna assign stuff again. I'm so sorry, but that's as, as specific as I'm gonna go today. <laughs> as long as counter is smaller than five. Oh my god. <laughs> we as executor one point fader destination and slash ignore exact time is true I think it was true and then we have let me check on my notes when I have a look on my notes here have a look on my notes restart is current so when counter is bigger than four it's gonna be page two and button destination and we don't need to set to restart. Oh my god, it was that simple. I just just... Instead of true, it's on. Sorry, my bad. Well, sorry for my really bad English here. <laughs> Damn it. Nice. No, no, we got that. Took us just six fucking tries. Oh. All right, the next look on my note tells me. We did the label, we did the ignore exact time, etc. Now, we want to, uh, oh, we're actually almost done, guys. How much are we? Half an hour. Woo, shit. <laughs> oh my God almost done what a joke <laughs> okay now we want to assign all those beautiful buttons we have an LTP fader we want to have a flash we want to have a temp fader we want to have a backward and a forward and this is much easier than you might think actually so what we are going to do is the same as always Every counter is smaller than five we assign uh, let's start with the fader we assign temp fader at executor one point fader destination that's already it uh buttons is a little bit different uh, temp fader we start with a flash at exec button one it goes from down to up at one point fader destination that's you know the coolest stuff from them all is this is actually a button <laughs> so backwards or previous you could call it to button two and next to button number three 
Let's see how this works. Oh, by the way, I feel like saving. Ooh, that looks nice. Temp fader. We have a flash and our back and forth. Just ignoring that little bit troubleshooting there in between. <laughs> we're actually running really good. So, we're we done with the faders. Oh yeah, people. It's, it's fucking going good. Oh, we are actually fast. This is so awesome. <laughs> okay, I gonna directly count like one, two, three, four, five. Here we want to start because I have prepared something. Now we want to assign the command into the first queue of our. I actually need to store something here, so let's do it. You see, there's a queue one, and now we want to fill something into the command line here, and that something is going to be following you know we have for the spots we're gonna have four effects here then four effects for the beams four effects for the group three so what we're going to do as soon as counter is bigger than four we're going to assign executor two point button destination q one slash cmd so what we basically want to write is of executor 106 through 110 oh by the way executor 2.106 minus 2.106 so uh, you might notice a problem with that <laughs> if we do it like this this is so specific because of the minus 106 this is so specific this is definitely working only for this one q so if we do this for them all, then we have in the worst case 25 lines running here if we go for 5 effects. We for sure don't want to write 25 single lines, that's boring. Everyone can do that. We, we do different. So what we do is we're going to add to the variable command put. So the thing is, there's different thing in computer language, which is this is a numberable, uh, just a number. When we set at one to this, then we will get two. At one, we get three. But if we write it like this, then it becomes a string, which is a text, not a number anymore. So if we write at one, we will get this. At one, we will get this. So what I am coming at is if we write off executor uh, two point. And then we add our button destination, for example, which is then 106. Then we will end up with 2.106. You know where I'm going here? <laughs> this is what we are doing. <laughs> so how are we going to do this? We need, as long as counter is bigger than four, we uh, set var cmd full to, I need a single quote, so the Double quote gets carried with off executor. Actually, only off. Off is totally fine. Base and only a single quote. So and now we are going to add something here. We add var in order to basically add extra text back there. Add var cmd one. I will come back to that. Cmd one will be executor 2.106 through 110 for now and then after this we add the button id the button destination and all this space was pretty damn senseless let's go up here since we have all our beautiful variables here let's do them as well. So let's prepare for five effects in case I want to change that later. One, two, three, four, five. So here we need to go with the group ID again. If group ID is one, we are going to set variable command one to executor two point one zero six through 110 minus 2 point and here we finish notice we have the whole thing in double quotes so that it becomes a string 
just the text. And, but we don't use the single quotes because those quotes we don't want to be carried with. We will only want the text within. So group ID is one, the variable group ID is one. And we uh, turn off all the executors 101 through 110, which are going to be all of those. 106 to 110. Okay, so far so good. Let's do the next one. Um, is two. Yeah, just just let me fix this real quick here. Okay, so now we got our CMD one variable. Uh, well, that, that actually does it. <laughs> oh, we can take this one out. We set var our off cmd1, which is what we just did up there. And then we add the button ID, button destination, which is then going to be like here, minus 2.106 for the first, or 107 for, seven for the second effect. So that's working just like a charm. The only thing we need to add down here is a double quote. So like I see, like you see, a double quote between two single quotes. So it's basically really just a double quote as a string. So it gets carried into the command. So this way we get our full command with complete separate variables all the time. So let me check my notes real quick here. I actually have notes. It's not awesome. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, now we uh, restart the macro. Yeah, and before we do that, let's think a bit. Um, we're doing everything in one group first and also in one fader first. So group and fader destination stay the same for the, until the counter gets reset, so until all the eight effects are worked on. So basically uh, everything is going to be uh, depending on the counter, so as long as counter is smaller than nine. Now we add, what do we add? We add the Q ID smaller than five actually for the Q destination, which we're gonna need for editing the Q's name. Label fader destination Q Q destination Q tag. So we say add var Q destination is one. Okay, what else do we need? We also need to add an effect ID for sure, <laughs> and also an executor button destination. Uh, let's see. Um, da -da 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 -da. let's do the effect ID. As long as counter is smaller than nine, we add var effect ID is one. So we add to the effect ID, and by the way, the button destination, we also need to add. All right. Dun, 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 dun. And here for sure as well. Okay. Done. With the counter. Oh, no, now comes the counter. <laughs> That's one. And now come our conditions for what happens when the counter hits 9. By the way, just as a reminder, 9 is for the amount of effects that we are editing. We have 8 effects, so when the counter hits 8, it does all of those. And then as last thing, since it's smaller than 9, it will add 1 to the counter, the counter will become 9, and then we reset everything and we start the macro. Right now we do everything on group 1 and also pay the destination 1 because every group gets just one failure. So now we uh, set the group ID. It's one. So now we add to the fader destination. This one, oh, let, let, let's, let's do things in order. Uh, effect ID is actually one. Next thing, fader destination. Fader destination, we add also just one. We just go to the next fader. Now, the next one is button destination. Here it gets a little bit more tricky. We are at button 
9 in this case. So we need to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 12. No, wrong, we are at button 10. So we need to add 11. It's 11. As we add 11. And now we reset our queue destination and our counter. Queue destination is 1. Since the next fader starts with Q1. And we reset our counter. Oh by the way, that's that's totally wrong. We don't add the bar. For resetting we need to do set bar. Please let this work, we are already at 57 minutes. Uh, yeah, and now we restart the macro. My notes say I didn't forget anything. Let's trust the notes. If group ID is smaller than group max, go to macro. Oh, yeah, what we're gonna name that? Let's call it create executors. Uh, let's also name it that. And as soon as the variable <laughs> group ID hits group max, we set our var setting and we turn off the macro. It's not really necessary, it's just good when you if you have any fails in your macro, which well on this channel I can say so far we tend to do sometimes. <laughs> And your macro is running endlessly into eternity, then it's good when you have a little fail safe and you can say set bar group ID to group max and it is forced to run this line with turning off the macro. That's that's a good thing. <laughs> and it even works often. Let's save. And let's hope that it works. Ooh, that looks good. That looks really, really, really good. Let's get that looks really, 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 really good. Ooh, spot, spot, spot. Me and watch. Oh, I think we did it. I think we did it. <laughs> Let's go direct action. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, something's wrong. Execute time is definitely ignored. So this is really good. So let's see. Off exit spot 106. Hmm, here something didn't work. Interesting. Oh. Oh. Oh my god, yeah, here you see what I did. <laughs> I forgot one is equal sign everywhere. That's why those lines weren't executed. Well, I actually have a magic button for such incidents. It's called Salvation 2 and we are going to use it. All right, um, let's do this. We have six groups. We have. Uh, yeah, we can't. We have only four groups with pointers that can actually dance. Alright, let's save. Oh, and I want, I want something else. I want. What do I want? Yo! This we want. Yo, T4! And let's do it. This is totally normal here. Yeah? This looks really good. We have all our temps. I mean, this worked before, so that's actually not far too surprising that this works now. Um, how does this look? This looks much better already. Woo! Yeah! Um, by the way, looks good. <laughs> hey, action. I want action. So you see, they, they cancel each other out, so they see. Yeah, just check here, you see, they turn each other off. <laughs> turn off executor, this root is minus the one that we just pressed. 
So this works. Like charm. <laughs> uh, I love it. Okay, let's see. Look if this actually did something. Um, but first we turn everything off. So. Um, here we go. Nice. Our sinus strobe. Can do this. This can be a little bit faster. Yeah, that, that's more like a strobe. Random strobe. And pulse. Uh, let's make it a little bit slower again. <laughs> See something. Beautiful. Okay, then we have our. Let's uh, go quick to my page one so we can turn those beauties on. So we have a circle. We have our tilt. Can we get them a bit higher up? Yeah, that looks better. Then we have our pawn. Never seen cancels each other out just like we want. And fly out. Oh yeah. One thing in the whole last episode here. Uh, what I'm going to add is setting all the modes here for all the dimmer values from absolute to relative because I don't want them to turn off my faders. Let's do this real quick, just as a little add. Mode is relative. And now when we when we turn on our spot and we make our fly out and turn the fly out off. The front is still there, it's not turned off by the relative. So, but yeah. Oh my god, one hour fifteen. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Alright. So next time. Next time we are going to create all the cue lists here to edit all of our moving effects values. It's mainly going to focus on the face, the groups and the blocks. Oh, and direction for sure. So yeah, that should actually go a lot faster than this video, I hope. Oh, that's so much work. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah! It's gonna be so much fun. So anyway, this for next time. Yeah, well, and that was it. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much to Cristiano Alves for your support. You're an incredible dude. And since this specific macro series is about to coming to an end really soon. I want you to write me in the comments what what you would like me to cover next. Yeah, if you have questions or just want to chat, feel free to contact me on Facebook, Instagram or LinkedIn. Links for that are in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And yeah, stay tuned and see you next time. Ciao!